So hello, uh, I'm Hiko Simon and I'm this, Rochelle Kopp. And uh, we are starting a new series, uh, which we're introducing this week, and we are starting from the same day next week, and it will be on every week, once a week, uh, and we'll be talking about uh, how not to screw up in Japan. Yes, I, it's funny, I, I have this prophecy about what the series is going to look like. Uh, who knows what it could be? I mean, you, I guess you're about to see it every week. But uh, I think we are going to cover not just actually how to not screw up in Japan, but also the reverse of that situation. Right. Um, how we, Japanese companies cannot screw up abroad. How Japanese companies cannot screw up abroad and expats cannot screw up abroad. Japanese expats as well as foreign expats coming to Japan. Right. People who want to work for Japanese companies and how to, how to survive that, how to do right. business with Japanese companies and vice versa. How to survive um, meetings with Japanese. Meetings, yes. How to figure out, uh, basically, I mean, meetings in Japan are, are, are like, like Seinfeld. You know, they're the meetings about nothing. Uh, so, yes, figure out how to survive that. We, we may go crazy and do an episode in Japanese. That would be fun. That would be amazing. I don't know. I don't, I don't even know if she can speak Japanese well, at this point. Oh, wow. Okay. So we have to do Japanese then. Um, so, yes, I tell you, you're not going to want to miss this. So, Rochelle, we do the introduction. Um, okay. So, Rochelle, you are the managing director. Managing it? principal. Managing principal. Uh, Sounds like a high school principal uh, and a company boss at well, the same time. Well, it's sort time. of like a consulting-ish title that it's I picked at the time. So, I like yeah. it. I, I would choose emperor when I choose my own company. But well, I could be queen of the world. Queen of the too, world. So. <laughs> okay, so this, Rochelle is queen of the world of a company called Japan Intercultural Jap Consulting. Right. Yes, it's my own firm that I started in 1994, so I've been doing this for a while. Yeah. And we work with Japanese companies that are operating globally, and then also firms from other countries that are doing business in Japan or with Japanese. Right. And, uh, and what, when you say you do business with these firms, what do you do with these firms? Ah, we do um, primarily cross-cultural training and consulting. Right. And so um, either it's training for Japanese who are dealing um, with people from other countries, Crazy or foreigners, crazy yes, foreigners. Yes, how to deal with us crazy foreigners, or how to manage us crazy foreigners, or how to sell to us. Yes. <laughs> yes, or how to not sexually harass us. We do that too. That's tough. <laughs> That's tough. <laughs> I don't know how they do that. <laughs> and then we do a lot of um, training for people from other countries who are dealing with Japanese. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, and your background before going, before setting up this company right. is you're somewhat of a Japanese cultural academic. Right. Yes, yeah, so I was sort of. Well, I had studied Japanese as an undergrad or kind of like an East Asian studies type undergrad and had spent time here during college. Then I worked in consulting in the U.S. after um, graduating. Then I came over here and I got a job at a large Japanese bank and got to see Japanese corporate culture from the inside. Oh, uh, and banks are the best and worst of that whole thing. Yes, yes. exactly. So it was um, definitely a very good concentrated experience of traditional Japanese corporate culture. I, I, I'm with you, yeah. And the bank I was working for was rapidly globalizing and I realized that okay if ever, all the other Japanese companies are having as much trouble as they are yeah. then people are gonna need help. Yeah. So, so that was the whole, so you went from that job at the bank to Going out on your own and starting um, up a, a company? Or? Yeah, a couple of steps in between. Yeah. I did that, went back, got an MBA. Yeah. Well, I just gave my MBA, started working on my first book. Right. And then worked for another consulting firm for a little while and yeah. then went out on my own. Cool. And, 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 and how broadly do you offer, the, the, how big is your company and how broadly do you offer services? Well, let's see, we've got um, about 70 people on our team all over the world. And so we've got people in, here in Japan, in the United States, in several different places in Europe, Latin America, China. We're about to add people in the Philippines as well. Well, and it's, part, it's got a Japanese focus at the center. It's supporting right. Japanese com companies com abroad and, and foreign companies. Doing business Japan. with Japan, exactly. Right. And so all the people, all these 70 people are people like yourself or people, I yes. guess, a bit like me. So people either who people who are from other countries who speak fluent Japanese yeah. or Japanese people who've spent a lot of time outside of Japan. Right. And what kind of things do you do for these companies that uh, come and ask for your help? Well, um, we, we, we do a lot of proactive work in terms of a lot of training or coaching. We also do a lot of what I call the emergency call. Yeah. Of we have an expatriate who is failing or... Um, our Japanese and our Americans are not getting along, and we're now lots of people are, are quitting. What do we do about it? You know, we, we help a lot of problem situations, too. Yeah. So the thing is, I mean, Rochelle does my life, basically. I mean, all the things that I talk about on my channel, um, 
about my learnings and experience from having worked in Japanese and foreign companies, all in Japan. So I've got a, I've got a very specific perspective and only one-sided on that. But um, the things that I love to talk about the most and the things that I just think about when I'm sitting on the train, you know, going home at night, and I, I think about why is this working or why isn't this working? Mm -hmm. These are things which, um, you know, and I don't know if any other, I've never, do you know, are there other companies that do what you do specifically? I've never um, even heard of yeah, it. Yeah, there's there not are... really anyone that has the pure Japan focus that we have. Yeah, so yeah. that's really, I mean, that's really cool. And it's kind of cool in a way that you take something that I know a lot of people are really interested in and think about all the time, but you've actually packaged it in a very specific way. Right. So, you know, it's a, you've got a wealth of knowledge, and I guess you get all this knowledge which builds up through the experience of dealing with different clients right. and seeing exactly. these different situations. Exactly. So clients can come to us and say, okay, I've got this really weird thing going on, and I'll say, oh, yeah, we've seen that before, and we've got a program for that. So, yeah, in a way, for all the people who are interested in learning about Japan and coming to Japan or, or surviving in Japan or, or, or Japanese going abroad or, or Kikokushijo people and stuff like that, yeah, it's kind of funny. I, so I have fantastic conversations with you because, you know, I, I, I obsess about these things a lot myself. <laughs> And they're interesting. They're really, really they interesting. They are interesting. They're enough to keep me busy. So I mean, yeah, there's more than a lifetime of this stuff. Even right. I mean, I've, I've done four jobs since coming to Japan, and those fully occupy my thoughts. But you provide it for, for lots of clients. Right, right. So, um, yeah, a, a wealth of really, really good knowledge about Japanese culture. But also, more importantly, you can study Japanese culture. You can do the whole Nihonjin Ron, what is the essence of Japanese culture stuff, which some people do. But... It's kind of irrelevant. It's like looking at J Japan in a test tube. Right, right, right. It's really where the interactions are that's interesting. The right. magic happens with the interactions. That's where, and, yeah. you know, and, and everything comes out with a different result. Right. And it's trying to figure out you know, what you know from all the elements around it to explain and help those, you know, the results of that interaction. Right. And that's what I find constantly fascinating. So because we have such fascinating conversations. And, uh, we thought we'd share them with you. And if you tolerate watching me, I know that you're interested in this stuff as well. So we have an awesome <laughs> series coming up. We're just going to call it How Not to Screw Up in Japan. Right. It's an obvious title. And uh, I have a feeling that they're going to be really, really awesome. So uh, hang around. Every week, we're going to ha you're going to see myself and Rochelle, and we're going to be talking about different cross-cultural Japanese uh, business and work situations at all levels, from, from big company negotiations to, you know, worker B right. getting beaten by his boss with a, with a wrapped up paper thing. <laughs> Everything we cover, right. we leave no, no stone unturned. Although, well, actually, no. To tell the truth, we leave many stones unturned. Which but, is why but, 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 but we turn over a few interesting ones. We turn over some very interesting ones, and if you like it, let us know because we might just do some more at the end of it. Right. But uh, I really hope this has been a really, really cool series to set up, and I really, really hope that you enjoy it. And all the information about what Rochelle does and everything is in the information below of this one and every every video, including a, a book introduction. You've got some books right, out right, there. Yeah and some bits and pieces. So uh, all the information is below in this video if you do go and check yourself uh, and to look forward to the episodes that are coming up. But um, yes, uh, all of that stuff will be available every week and look forward to it. We've got a bunch of episodes and it'll be really cool. Yeah. So uh, check it out soon. Yeah. See you next week. Right, peace.